<laughs> you we, we, we thought we, had, we were going to be big stars after this. <laughs> well, big is relative. Your, your stars well, I get done with the story. He will be a star. Oh. <laughs> no, I will be a star. <laughs> no. All right. When you're ready, we're ready. This is going to be the fastest interview in in the history, history of it might be. interviews. It might be. <laughs> there, isn't, there isn't much to tell. We, we can do every foot if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, we can talk it's real, real slow. slow. There you go. Anyway, I'll just speed it up later. Okay. okay. <laughs> now you're good to go. We're recording. All right. You ready? Yep. He's ready. Okay. Uh, this is the Tanker Reunion interview program. We've got Dave Thompson and Roger... Krupke? Krupke. Krupke. Um, and they're going to give us some stories or tell us a story, at least one story, about their experiences in Vietnam with the Marine Corps. So gentlemen, take the floor. Well, who, who wants to start? Uh, I can start with what, yeah, you how, I, how I got to... Dave's the main character, so... Okay. <laughs> well, I arrived in Vietnam in uh, March of 1967, approximately March 16th, I think it was, right around there, within a day or so. And you know, uh, as you know, Pete, uh, report to division, you had to see the division commander. Right. That took a day or so, and then his battalion a couple of days. That was a company, and the company commander was uh, Captain Cherico, XO was a Lieutenant Hubbard, and uh, they showed around basically the TOR, that kind of stuff, gave me, gave me all the scoop on what was going on in the company area. And asked me which platoon I wanted to take over, because None of the platoons had a lieutenant at the time. Wow. They had one dead, but he was being rotated within days. So one platoon was in the field, of course, a good hard charger right out of basic school and time school. Oh, I want the, I want the platoon in the field. <laughs> well, naturally, <laughs> you know, that's the way it goes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and so on, the day was March 21st. It's a day I'll never forget. A uh, day of infamy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it came my time to finally get to the field. Now, Roger and I have different memories of how this really happened. Okay. As I remember it, I was at Bravo Company Tanks, which was near, near Dylock Pass at the time. And I mounted the tank, Bravo 2-2, which he had been tank commander. Right. And I assumed his place, of course. Mm. And in the field was uh, Bravo 2-1 and Bravo 2-3. Uh, 2-4 and 2-5, uh, as I recall, they were battalion for repair and maintenance, whatever. And... Uh, but uh, two, two, one, and two, three were in the mud flats below south of Hill 55 on a sweep, and uh, I know they were they were attached to Alpha One One because that was part of my orders. I had my little platoon leader's notebook. <laughs> I'm sure you probably had a little green book. <laughs> yeah. And in my notebook it says, "You Alpha One One is all you work with at this time. Nobody else." And we were. It's really a confusing deal because we were closer to Charlie Company than we were Bravo Company. So administratively, we belonged to Bravo Company. Tactically, we belonged to Alpha 1-1. And for supplies and maintenance, logistically, we were Charlie. So every, it was all screwed up. It was a mess. So I had all kinds of notes in the notebook on different people I was supposed to, places I was supposed to call, units I was supposed to contact, da-da-da, you know. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I'm a second lieutenant. Yeah. <laughs> what do I know? You know, I got all this written down. And, and one last thing they told me, find out who we got down there. <laughs> Serious. I got that written. I think I showed it to you in my book. I should have brought my book. I wish yeah. I would have. It's still written there. Find out who we have there. They knew they had a guy named Baker and Kropke. Well, Kropke was on the tank with me. Okay. This was Kropke. Baker, I have no clue who Baker was. Well, we get down there. We follow a Jeep down to 55. It was the captain of Charlie... Uh, company commander of Charlie Company. He led us down there. I didn't know the way. I didn't know where 55 was. You know, barely had a map. And crossed the bridge south of 55 and met up with the two, two tanks already in position right. and two squads of infantry. So there was a Sergeant Kukendall, I think was his name. He had been in charge of that section. And he was leaving. So I get out of the Jeep. I go there. Kugendall hands me a Perk 25 radio so I could talk to the infantry. Because I was going to be in charge. Right. <laughs> okay, I got this, <laughs> you know. Really, because we had the old radios in the tank. Yeah. We couldn't convert it over, you know. And so without the Perk 25, I couldn't talk to the infantry. So 
So I take that and I strap it on. I got it sitting out there. And away we move. We start moving east. <laughs> we moved maybe, give me a break. 10 feet? 400 meters. <laughs> give me 400 meters. <laughs> 400 meters. <laughs> give me a break. It's probably less than that. <laughs> well, we came to a, 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 a crick bed. And they had gone through there several hours before. Right. So we had uh, engineers. So we sent out the engineers to sweep for mines in case the gooks uh, right. snuck in behind us. Well, we stopped, and I'm looking through binoculars. I grabbed the radio to see how they were coming. Next thing I knew, I'm down. I didn't. I had no clue what happened, but I was down at the bottom of the tank. So I get up, get back up to the TC cupola, and I grab the radio. And about that time, Corporal Kropke grabs me. He says, "You're hit." And I, what? No. I'm fine. He said, no, you're not. He pulled me down. <laughs> now you take over. Well, you, that's the whole story. It took about 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, was no, there. see, we, yeah, we had uh, two tanks out there, and Gunny Sims uh, was like the platoon commander, right. or, or acting platoon commander. He was actually the platoon sergeant, and uh, Never we, and we uh, because we hadn't had a lieutenant since July, I think. Yeah. You know, we just uh, were operating with a with a gunnery sergeant. So they had called and said, hey, you're getting a new lieutenant, you know, uh, you go out to here and you meet him and bring him back and he's going to be in charge, you know. So the two tanks rolled out there. We jump off, I meet Dave, you know, only I didn't know, you know, we introduced each other, but I couldn't remember his name until... And, and the only reason I knew his name because it was written in my book. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the story is what happens really after this. But uh, so anyway, we, you know, he, Dave goes, "Well, you mind if I take over your tank?" I go, "No, that's fine. You know, I'll I'll jump in the loader's hatch and stuff." And so we we get up on top, and he's standing in you know where I would normally be, and I'm in the loader's hatch, and and we we take off, and I'll give you the four hundred meters. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all of a sudden, I I have this this thing just cracks right in front of my face. You know, I can feel the wind, yeah. you know, and Dave is hit, you know, and I and I know it. And, you know, he's down, back up, and I, so I pulled him down, laid him down the bottom of the tank, like we were talking at lunch. You know, he goes, I didn't think I was hit that bad. And I said, well, I did. I could see everything inside of you. <laughs> oh, God. You know, because well, I, I did not split him right across here. And so it just opened him up, yeah. and everything was everything was showing. So I know it's inside, Dave. Now. <laughs> and well, they, we finally, and we had to get to where Alpha Company was. Yeah. I was the one who had a map. You remember that? They're looking for a map. Know where they? Nobody was for sure where they were. Jeez. And it was it was old Route Four, uh -huh. which eventually became Liberty Road. At that, that time, it was just a dirt track. They hadn't done it, it hadn't been used in years. And they were right off that. So I, I told them, you know, just keep heading east and you'll get there. And yeah, we got we're... there. I, I, I jumped off the tank. I was fine. I had no clue. I, I thought, I was fine, I thought. And I get <laughs> there and they, I, I get out of the tank and I walk over and this corpsman grabs it, get down. I got down. In the middle of the pad, they strapped me to a stretcher. And the lieutenant who was in charge there of Alpha 1-1 was one of my basic school classmates. I don't know which one it was, because uh -huh. he knew me. He come out, tapped me on the shoulder, says, this is not like basic school. Oh, and I was trying to see him, and I couldn't see him. And so then, helicopter was supposed to pick me up, of course. Then the jets come over, and they start dropping napalm around us. Oh, <laughs> I believe it. I don't have a weapon. I, I'm getting a little worried about that, yeah. but I, I still think I'm all right. Well, the chopper finally gets in, take off. Well, the gunner gets hit. And he gets and yeah, the chopper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, gets, he just gets shot, just grazing the shoulder, so he's bleeding all over the place. Well, they get me today. I think I'm fine. They haul me off the chopper. And they bring in a big Quonset hut, and there's, there's a bunch of I don't know how many were laying there. There's a lot, and the corpsman starts on me, and I had a new pair of boots that I bought it. Fort Knox, those nice Corcoran jump boots with the steel toes. And I told him, I don't lose my boots. 
He says, Lieutenant, you got other things to worry about. I said, no, I'm fine. You take care of those guys. I'm okay. He says, you're next. I said, what? Wow. I said, no, I'm doing good. And all of a sudden, they take me in there. And this priest comes, and they start giving me the last rites. Oh, man. Then it finally hit me. I'm not doing real good. <laughs> but until that time, I, so you wouldn't I believe felt fine. Me. Yeah. <laughs> And the next I'm thing I knew, yeah, I <laughs> the next thing I knew, it's that evening. It's dark. I wake up for just a few seconds. They're loading me onto a 130. I, I know I'm going up the ramp, and the company commander Cherico is there. Right. And he says something to me. I don't know what he said. I just remember looking at him, and I was right back out. And the next thing I knew, I woke up in the Philippines. Good Lord. Several days later, so I ended up I had peritonitis and. Oh, yeah. I, I just remember waking up in bed and you can smell vinegar. They pumped so much aspirin to get my temperature down. Yeah. And they had to change the sheets, I guess, because it was just like, like salt all over you. And, which I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know any of this, you know. Is this a sniper round, you figure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 See, and after, after we got him off of the tank, you know, then, you know, we're scanning the tree lines and like he said, you know, that's when the helicopter came in. And, the jets and the napalm and stuff, and we're firing into the into the tree line, you know, trying to lodge whoever's yeah. in there. But and then the story actually. So anyway, we went about our business, and that, that part of the story is over. The neat yeah. part of the story is what 40, 45 years later. Yeah, roughly forty five years later. Forty five years later, you know, I I had uh, I had a friend boot camp. And we were having dinner one night, and he told me, uh, you know, and he was in tanks too. Right. He was in Charlie Company, but he says, you know, there's a tanker association out there. And I said, no, I didn't know that. And so he gave me the website. I went on the website and, you know, signed up for it and put my name in and figured that's it, you know. I I was a was in the association. Well, come, uh, let's see, it was 07. Yeah, it was 07. And I get this email from Dave, or from a person. Yeah. See, and you, I, you probably don't even remember his name at this point. No, point. and I told my wife, you know. And I, all I knew was his last name, but yeah. there can't be too many Crofties. And I knew he was from California. For some reason, I knew you were from California, and I don't know how I knew that. Uh, but I didn't know he was from But California. I had told, told this story, you know, about this lieutenant who got into Vietnam, you know, and, and he, 10 minutes in the field, and he's out, you know. <laughs> you broke the record. <laughs> and, uh, so I didn't help the average in. <laughs> I don't know if it's a record, but it didn't help so, the average. So yeah, but I never knew that, never knew his name or anything, you know. And right. so people, you know, people go, "Wow, you know, what a story." You know? Well, anyway, I get this email, and I'll give it to Dave on the email, and he answered. And so I called, and I called his house. And the first time I called, his wife answered the phone. She says, "He's in the shower," and I said, "Well, my name is Dave Thompson." And I was in a Marine Corps with Roger, and he was with me when I was wounded. Oh, he wants to talk to you. He's, I've heard that story a hundred times <laughs> over the years. <laughs> he said, I'll go get him. I said, no, you, oh, just wait. Uh, I'll call back. He said, no, he'll call you as soon as he gets out of the shower. And he did. And we talked, for, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. Wow. Yeah. And we only really knew each other 10 or 15 minutes. It was off of the... Um, the the Tanker Association Tanker. website. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and I get the email goes, you know, if you are, you know, the Roger Kropke who was on <laughs> Tank you, Two yeah. Two and and had a lieutenant shot and so on and so I'm forth. Him. <laughs> you know, I'm him, and I'd like to talk to you. Wow. And we knew each other. We got to uh, Las Vegas at separate times, and I I got there before him. As soon as he walked in the door, I knew who he was. Really. And he looked over and he saw me and he knew exactly who I was. Unbelievable. And it was like we'd known each other our whole lives within a half hour. Yeah. Seriously, it was. Like we were old friends. It, it it was amazing story. Yeah. It just. And it, so every year since then, we've, we've gotten, gotten together. We've gotten together. That's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've gone to state with him in California twice, and he came to my town. I live in Illinois. He came to Illinois, and we went to a vacation in Washington D.C. together. Yeah. For a week. Amazing. Yeah. And, and we've gone to, well, we missed the Charleston reunion because I yeah. had broken my leg and couldn't, didn't feel like hobbling around. And, yeah. But we've been to San Lake Diego. San Diego and Dave came out, stayed right. with us. We went down there and, you know. Yeah, San Diego's convenient. It was yeah. good. It was fun. 
And so anyway, that's the neat part of the story is, uh, our, yeah. and our wives, you know, Dave and I, good friends. Yeah, and the wives are off great too. Wow. But the wives that's... feel the same way. It's, yeah. it's like the two families, like we we have known each other forever. forever. Yeah. It, it's, and it's, the wives get along good, we all get along good, and it's just been a great, great friendship. That's fantastic. Well, that's a great story. Yeah. I think that, that you're right. That is one that you probably would, because you never knew who, I didn't know half my platoon's real right. names. Right. Um, you know, we all had, we had radio names, so you know, you just, and in fact, um, when I got back, 20 years later, Vargo found me somehow, and he said, I heard you were dead. Yeah. And I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went back. I volunteered. I got out of the hospital in end of May 67. And when I got out, I was at Great Lakes. Sent me to, I, I ended up at Great Lakes. When I got out at Great Lakes, of course, they had, as soon as they get out, you're attached to the yeah. Marine Barrack Center. I go over and uh, I go into the office and report in, you know, and the Sergeant Major says, uh, you got any requests for duty station? I said, yeah, I'd like to go back. Well, I don't know, Lieutenant. I don't know about that. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Uh, just a minute. So he goes into the office and sees the colonel. Well, then the colonel calls me and says, I hear you, you're volunteering to go back. Are you sure you want to do that? I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. What year was this? 1967. 1967. Okay. Late May, early June, and he says, "Well, that's what you really want to do. We'll see what we can do." He says, "You go on home." And I only lived uh, two and a half hours from Chicago, right. so he says, "You go home. We'll get back to you." So I went home, and I stayed. I stayed home for about four or five days. You know, and phone rings. I says, "Well, we got your orders." I said, "Okay, good. Am I going back?" He says, "Yep, but you have to stay in the states six months." I said, "Oh, okay. That's that'd be fine." Yeah. Where am I going? You're going to Glenview Naval Air Station. I was a tank officer. <laughs> Sorry, what? Glenview Naval Air Station at the time was headquarters for the 4th Marine Air Wing. Right. And so I became the wing assistant motor transport officer. I had no, I had no idea about motor transport. But I reported in, and the day I reported in, I reported this captain. Because it was all senior. There were only two lieutenants there in this command. It was a, a former enlisted lieutenant in the supply department, than me. And it was like two captains, the rest were majors, lieutenant colonels, colonels, and yeah. generals. And I actually reported this captain. He says, looked at my orders. What the hell are you doing here? You're at 1800. I said, isn't that tanks? I guess. Why are you here? I don't know. <laughs> no. So I said, wait a minute. They take me up to the general, General Art Adams, great guy. And, he said, you got to go and believe this, General. He looks at him, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> the same thing, I don't know what I'm doing here. And, and, and actually, I loved it there. I had a great time. I learned a lot. Yeah. I spent a lot of time acting as the General's aide because his, 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 the captain was his aide, but his captain, the captain had orders for Vietnam as a pilot. Right. And he to spend time with his wife. We made a lot of trips around the country inspecting reserve units and stuff. Okay. So the captain would set everything up, then I would go with the general. Yeah. It would be the, the dog robber, we called him. You know, I would just <laughs> so did you ever go back? <laughs> yes, I did. I went, I went back. I returned to uh, Bravo Company uh, December. Middle of, I finally got back there in December 67. Wow. And Tanks? Ta oh, yeah. Bravo. I was in Bravo Company and then H&S. Yeah. Same well, I spent most of the time, it, uh, just about well. Yeah. The second day, the second day I was with Bravo Company. I went out on the road sweep, and we weren't 200 meters from where I was hit the year before. Oh my gosh! And we got hit again. We started getting incoming rounds. You're, you're a slow learner. <laughs> now don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> All I could do was laugh. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. What can else what can, can else you can do? I just, I, I, just dropped down, I, I just dropped down. Yeah, I just dropped down. Yeah, he was, was back. He was yeah, I went to Quantico, and uh, you know, out of, I, I'm a West Coast guy. Yeah. And so I, when they, you know, you sign your little paper where you want to go, and I put San Diego, you know, Pendleton or El Toro, yeah, and they lots said, of options. Yeah, and they sent me to Quantico. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so I went. At, we were in the in the student demonstration troops there, and so, oh, so we put on 
there's like, I, well, you went through Quantico. Yeah. Right? There's only one battalion of, of enlisted on the whole base, and, and all we do is put on. Uh, Oh, you remember the yeah. demonstrations, demonstrations just for the We used to the fight them all the time, remember? We, yeah. Yeah. we beat them in a lot of battles. <laughs> yeah. well. And, well, that was us, you know. And, and so we did that for until, uh, well, for, for a long time. You know, that, that's what our thing was. And then we... And then I went to combat in Washington, D.C. in the 68 riots. We, we, oh, yeah. we got sent up to Washington, D.C. for that. And I met Hubert Humphrey on the streets and stuff. He, so it was, it was a good good tour. Wow. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, knowing each other for all of 15 to 20 minutes <laughs> and then hooking up like you did yeah. is, is, is part of it the Marine Corps, I think. It's yeah. that small. Yeah. And that time oh, it is. Well, the Marine Corps is a small place. I, yeah. To add another story, if I might. My son, he's a Marine, uh, he's a major now. At the time he was a captain, he, and he, was, he got assigned to headquarters in Marine Corps. And they had this other captain report in, Nuri. My son was walking by his desk, and he sees this picture of this guy's father standing next to a red MGB. Mm -hmm. I had a red MGB. And my son, what's that? He says, well, that's my dad. I was taking a basic school at Quantico, 1967. Oh. He says, that's not your dad's car, is it? He says, no, it was another lieutenant he went to tank school with. He says, yeah, that was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, that's really True story. True story. Uh, well, it's amazing how you guys have connected and stayed connected. Oh, that's been great. And become, and become good friends besides become, be, being good Marines. You know, it's just been, it's been that's good. great. It's been yeah. fun. It's been fun. He probably saved his butt, you know. Probably did. By pulling him back down. He probably did. More than likely. Yeah. I wasn't very smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Thank you very much. Oh, you're great. very welcome. Great story. Well, thank you. And we'll, um, if we've got anything we need further, you know, we know how to get a hold of you. And sure. if you get some more stories, you know, don't be shy. Email me. And I can tell you a quick one about the hospital. Sure. It's got a crazy story. <laughs> that was of the best kind. <laughs> well, well, when I, when I got to the hospital at Great Lakes, you're out of it. The trip kills you, yeah. you know, because they, they, we flew back, and you're at the Bethesda overnight, and you get to Chicago, and you get to Great Lakes, and you, you're wore out. Yeah. You're, you're, just, you're just beat. And so I slept a day or so, and I kind of came to, and I hear this voice. And you, when I was at basic school, my roommate was a German, Erwin Topper and he had the German accent. He was born in Germany. It was Topper. My roommate from Quantico was in the adjoining room. Then the story is better. Well, I'm in the room with this captain who was a pilot. He got shot in the leg and hit the back of his leg, came all the way up and just laid his leg wide open. So it's just all open. Well, I've got stomach wound. I can't stand up straight. And Topper's hit right through the hand. He's like this. Well, this captain, he's quite the ladies man and quite the drinker. And he talks this nurse into getting the civilian clothes. <laughs> and so she does. And the PX. So we sneak out of the hospital. We don't have any shoes. <laughs> we sneak out of the hospital. <laughs> and one guy's like this. I can't stand up. <laughs> we're we're <laughs> up in this captain. <laughs> and we go to the officer's club. And we get there. And we have three or four beers. Oh, well, we're drunk on our rear ends, yeah. you know. They called the short patrol to come and get us. We were taken back to the hospital by the short patrol. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they took all our clothes. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> this okay. admiral was in charge of the hospital. He had a personal meeting with all three of us. Oh man. Yeah. And I had this tube in my stomach, and then the doctor come in, they laid me down, and he pulled the whole thing all out at once. They were supposed Ooh. to take it out a little bit. I couldn't move for like four days. Yeah. All I could do was lay in the fetal position. He says, you won't be going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> But they restrict. They took everything we had. Yeah, you were. And they, the nurse they removed from the corner and brought in some mean old gal. You know, <laughs> <laughs> they kept us <laughs> side by side. Oh <laughs> my gosh! Well, fan, fantastic. Oh, uh, it was fun. All we're right, the best so for the world. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Right. Sure. Thank you, Pete. We'll see you up at the statue. Thank, thank you for all your efforts. Okay. Oh yeah, this is great. This is going to be fantastic. Oh, you got to have a little levity. You know. Oh, yeah. Oh, almost every interview that I've had ended with, all right, so camera off, let me tell you this story. <laughs>